Thank you. Stan, all I can say is that with that nice, welcoming, warm introduction, that too will get you about 3% in the Iowa Presidential Caucus. <laughs> How do I know I've tried it before? <laughs> so to the Board of Trustees, especially my elegantly robed mother, who looks like she could fill the Supreme Court vacancy, to our distinguished faculty behind me, without whom none of this would be possible. We're so very, very proud of them. And to say that this university has flourished over the years is an accurate statement, but never more so than under the leadership of my good friend, Stan Albrecht. He is an incredible leader, and we're all very much in his depth for what he has done. I'm also honored to be able to share the stage with Jed and Andy and Doug and Minister Leisure, who's not here with us, but we feel here in spirit. What an honor that is. And I have to say to the proud parents and the proud grandparents who are here, this is kind of your day too, so we'd kind of like to ask you to stand up for a moment. Parents and grandparents, please. All right, students, now's the time to say thank you, right? Thank you. There you go. That was great. And you, the class of 2016, I mean, how does this feel? You come from all over the world. You come from around the country. You come from far off places like China, Armenia, the Dominican Republic. And it's such a great honor to be here with you. I have to tell you that graduation is one of life's great milestones. I guess the others would be considered your birth, your death, surviving the seagulls on Old Main after Easter, <laughs> or earning the rank of ultimate Aggie. Boy, do I feel sorry for that bull. So let me address what some of you might be wondering here today. No, I'm not the guy after whom your brand new building on campus is named. That's my dad. But I'm proud and honored to be here to represent the Huntsman line, and hopefully if I do my job right, to maybe leave you with just a little bit of decent advice. Now, my dad would actually be the first to tell you that the Huntsmans aren't very good at listening to advice themselves. You see, he's upset with my career choices, just as his dad was upset with his own. You see, my dad's dad was an educator just south of here in a small Idaho town. And he expected all of his family members to become educators as well. Nothing was more honorable, respectable, or important. And we all believe that to be the case today. And he always told his sons, if you can't cut it as an educator, you'll always need a fallback position in life. You can always go into business. <laughs> My dad went into business and he did okay. So I got the same lecture growing up from my dad. And maybe some of you can relate. That was before he had any spare change in his pocket. Son, he would say, if you really want to make a difference in this world, create jobs, contribute meaningfully, control your own destiny, you need to go into business. But not everybody's cut out to go into business. You're always going to need a fallback position in life. You can always go into politics. <laughs> so basically, to put things in proper perspective, I stand here as the loser of a loser of an educator. <laughs> we all started out with very noble intentions, but somehow something went wrong along the way. So no, you didn't get anybody cool like Taylor Swift, who's one of my favorites. You didn't get Game of Thrones' Jon Snow. Spoiler alert, he's back, right? <laughs> but, but I'm here, and I'm deeply honored to be able to share a few thoughts with you. Now, I stand before you as a fellow Utah, a former governor of this great state, a former United States diplomat, 
and a failed presidential candidate. Now, how many people can brag about that? Well, I guess after this election cycle, quite a few, actually. <laughs> so I'm also here as someone who has always admired and respected this university. I was first introduced to the Aggie life through my grandpa Haight, who was still one math class short of graduating when he passed at 97 years of age. He was a proud dishwasher at the Bluebird Cafe, later a beloved church leader, and one of life's great inspirations. Our daughter Mary Ann is also an Aggie, who was fortunate enough to be mentored as a pianist by the nationally renowned Aggie faculty member, Gary Amano. So, Gary. so first, some perspective, then just a little bit of advice which I offer in great humility, knowing that my own failures and shortcomings in life are probably no different than yours. I'm just a little older, a little grayer, and as a public servant, they're just a little bit more on open display. So like you, I've been shaped by the events of my generation. My earliest memories were Vietnam, civil rights, the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show. It was a time of tumult, uncertainty, and great change. So much so that many wondered with the assassination of beloved leaders, the overhang of imminent nuclear war, a failing economy, troops deployed in a foreign quagmire, and the resignation of a president, if our nation would even survive. That was my generation. Well, it did survive. Like every generation since independence, but you can imagine if all that generational drama had been magnified through Twitter, Facebook, Drudge Report, and the screaming cable networks, if the outcome would have been something different for my generation. You see, each wave of graduates has a set of circumstances that make it seem like the wheels are coming off the bus, that there is no hope around the corner. You listen to the presidential candidates today and they talk as if this country will fall apart if they aren't the ones elected. Well, welcome to politics, my friends. The political reality, the real world reality is this. We have wars, we have recessions, we have social revolutions, and sometimes even our own political parties implode. But in each case, we recover. We learn our lessons, we become even more resilient. Some like to call it creative destruction. I call it freedom, which we still have in greater abundance than virtually any nation on earth. So the world you now step into, regardless of your upbringing or your point of origin, should be a cause for excitement not fear. Anticipation, not anxiety. The prospect of driving opportunity deeper into deprived communities, breakthroughs in conquering human disease, lifting the poor from desperation, and bringing about a more confident and hopeful generation that is yours. Because every challenge that threatens us today, when you stop to think about it, has a corresponding solution within our grasp. We just need more problem solvers and fewer politicians. So now you begin to take ownership and responsibility for our future. And what you discover may actually surprise you. Life at all levels still requires the human touch, the displays of goodness, selflessness, tolerance, and compassion that make this world beautiful if you're fortunate enough to find it, and I hope you do. And make no mistake about it, while technology will drive us to mind-bending destinations during your lifetimes, at the end of the day, the world is still managed at all levels by human beings and human emotion. Happiness, sadness, mercy, thankfulness, and forgiveness. All attributes of living human beings, but the traits of the most successful among us for the foreseeable future will require the most precious 
of all attributes, good judgment. Just what you Aggies are famous for. So finally, let me display the truly bad judgment of dispensing just a little bit of advice. So now that you've graduated, after you were constantly reminded never to get an F in any of your classes, I'm telling you just the opposite. That in order to have a life fulfilled, you will need a few Fs of a different kind. So first F, find yourself. So just who are you and who will you be? And how will you change the world? As you walk through the procession line, I ask some of you individually, what are you gonna to do to change the world? Go out there and make it happen. Those are not idle words. Whether you realize it or not, you have a gift, a genius that no one else on earth has. Find it and nurture it. By this I mean you need direction, not just a profession, but a pathway in life that is uniquely yours. You see, life isn't a straight and narrow path that is the shortest distance between two points. In fact, life is full of turns, hills, alleyways, sometimes cliffs, lots of speed bumps and potholes. But your passion will never be complete unless you learn to follow your heart. So quit asking others what they think you should be. Look in the mirror and ask yourself and follow your heart because it will never let you down. And quit comparing yourself to others because jealousy can rob you of self-respect and recognizing your God-given individuality. Second F, find a cause. Find something to be passionate about, something to believe in, something to have faith in, something to save, something to free. And when you found that cause, speak out. Take action and never let it be said that you were too timid to be counted, too weak to stand by your cause. Third F, face failure. I'm aware that many of you haven't yet landed jobs that you wanted. I'm aware that many of you have faced hardships, some deeply personal. I know I have. Failure only hurts if you are unable to turn it into a learning experience that makes you stronger and wiser. As much as you'd like to hope it, life will not provide immunity from failure for any of you. Fourth F, find somebody to love. Because love is the most powerful emotion in the whole world. And there are people all around us who need an emotional lift that only another human being can provide. Mary Kay and I have two adopted daughters, one from India, the other's from China. We never thought we could love something or someone as much as we do them. A few years ago, we had the opportunity to visit a humble vegetable market where our daughter, Gracie, was abandoned in Yangzhou, China. For the first time, she was able to see where she'd come from. Many of the women who nurtured and provided for her in her early months in the orphanage were still there and they remembered her. Gracie came to realize that love can transcend race, geography, religion, and class. As we were there, I couldn't help but reflect on Gracie's biological mother, who wasn't there. But some 16 years ago, left her in plain sight, so as to make sure that she could be found and have a chance at life. I'm sure her love for this little girl was no less than her own. There are people who need friends and others who need hope. Reach out your hand and give them your heart. You'll be a whole lot better for it, I assure you. Fifth F, and finally, find meaning. You'd be surprised at how many people go through life without ever discovering their true potential for putting their life in a meaningful context. When I was the United States ambassador to China, I learned a valuable lesson on a visit to an American citizen who was languishing in a Chinese prison for espionage for more than two years without being charged with a crime or given a trial. A brilliant physicist 
who I had come to admire following numerous visits. During my last visit, sitting in the sobering and sterile surrounding that had become this man's existence, guarded by the ever watchful eye of the public security officers, I brought him photos and letters from his family. And as he read the cards, he was clearly moved and visibly shaken. As he wiped the tears from his eyes, he stated that he hoped his children would learn three simple lessons so that their lives would have meaning. This from a dad who didn't know whether he'd ever see them again. And he wanted me to communicate this back to them, which I did. First, they should have goals. Most important for this dad to pass on to his kids. Second, create an intellectual framework or personal philosophy to value the world and the people around them. This in turn will lead to wisdom, he said. And third, they must remember that experience is the most valuable of all training grounds. Everyone will make mistakes. They are the dues owed to life. But learning from them in order not to make them again is a key to a happy and successful journey. Pretty profound statements from a man who had everything taken from him, but only wished the best for his children. So now you have your five Fs and the most exciting chapters in life ahead. So finally, let me conclude with probably the best wisdom you're gonna to hear today. The most valuable of all talents, said Thomas Jefferson, is never having to use two words when one will do. I think I probably used my quota for the day. So congratulations and good luck, class of 2016. We're very proud of you. Thank you very much. <laughs>